Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm very happy to have you here guys. As you can see in today's video, I want to talk about a new brand here on my channel and a new brand to me that I discovered in the last few months. The brand is called Une Nuit Nomade. I have here their discovery kit with not all their fragrances, but I think some of their most popular fragrances. And I will talk about the ones that are more, let's just say that they were created more for autumn winter because now at least where I live, I'm in autumn and we will approach winter. So I was thinking to talk about their heavier fragrances and leave the lighter fragrances as let's just say the spring is approaching, you know? So I have the discovery set and also I have a bottle, like a full bottle of my choice. They were kind enough to let me choose whatever full bottle of fragrance I want from them. I chose uh, Jardin de Misfa. Now you guys, if you are into fragrances, if you're passionate about fragrances and if you watch different reviewers, I'm sure you must have heard at least once. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry for this, but I cut my finger while I was uh, cooking something, so yeah. Uh, but I'm sure you've heard at least once about this brand now. Now this brand is a brand with a beautiful story behind and this brand has the gift to basically to make how to explain this in English like to immerse yourself into the concept behind their fragrances in a way like I, I can truly sense that all their fragrances are so well thought and are such, they all have a specific purpose in a sense. I feel like none is out of place. None of their fragrances leave me, leave me just like meh, you know, even though some of them are not my kind of fragrances, but when you test their fragrances, you can sense that there was a true passion behind them. You know, these are not fragrances created just for the sake of sales in a sense, you know what I mean? So yes, let me quickly touch on the discovery kit. Look, you guys, when I first saw the discovery kit, first of all, <laughs> I was not expecting it to be so heavy. I mean, I know how it looked. I will insert, I have it here, but I will insert a close up with the discovery kit. Uh, basically, as you open it, you will see all the fragrances there. You have 10 samples. Each sample is 2.5 ml. And if you want to take any samples out, you just uh, press here at the end of the sample and the sample just pops off. And also something that really intrigued me, you guys, is the fact that you have uh, you have cards for all their fragrances, cards where they give you the notes breakdown for all the fragrances, but also they tell you the story behind. And I find this such a beautiful detail because at least when I was testing the fragrances from the discovery kit, now grant you, I try to not read the notes, but I try to read the story, you know, because I don't like to read the notes before I'm testing a fragrance because then it's almost like, even though my nose doesn't pick up that no note or like that accord in particular, but if my mind knows it's there, then I don't know, maybe I'm more inclined to get it. You know what I mean? So I wanted to test them without knowing the notes before. But like I said, I read the descriptions for all of them. And I don't know who thought about this concept, but it's such a beautiful and unique touch, I feel like, because you get to have a true feel of the concept behind each fragrance, what it's supposed to embody, what kind of energy it's supposed to give you, what kind of mood they were going when they created this fragrance, you know? So I feel like it's a whole, like, I don't know, it's a whole experience to test their fragrances, you know? And something that I thought to myself, this is basically what I wanted to say before I started to present you this, is first thing that I saw, or like, not even saw that I felt more like, is how heavy this discovery kit is, you guys. I was expecting it to be like a light, like cardboard, cardboard, you know, but it's very heavy and it's a very sturdy, I think it's the word in English. It's a very like well done, robust discovery kit, you know, and it feels like I told you, it feels like a true experience. And from what I saw, it's very affordable. And something that I wanted to say is that if you have now that, uh, I know Christmas is not approaching yet, but I don't know, slowly we will be getting there. If you have friends, let's just say, and you know they are very passionate about fragrances, maybe you are scared to buy them a full bottle of a fragrance, or maybe they have such a wide collection that you don't want to purchase them anything, or you just want them, or you just want to give them something, let's just say something a bit more different, something a bit more special, I would highly encourage you to buy this discovery set for that friend of yours. Now, if any of my friends were to purchase this one as a gift for me, you guys, I would be the happiest. I feel like for me, um, it's kind of hard to purchase fragrances for me because I have such a specific taste, you know, and my friends not being, let's just say, into fragrances like I am. I feel like the only person who actually understands my taste when it comes to fragrances and bought me amazing fragrances as gifts is my partner. 
uh, but like I said, he really understands my taste. But if you have friends who are passionate about fragrances, get them discovery kits. You will not break the bank and they will get to try amazing fragrances. And I'm telling you, it's almost like a ritual, you know, like let's just say like you take one day for one fragrance you know like when you're drinking your cup of coffee in the morning perhaps during the weekend when you have more time you're just taking let's just say i have this one right here so i will just say this you're taking the sample of jardin de misfa you're taking the um how do you say like the card piece you know like the yeah, like the card piece with the information, with the note. You have a cup of coffee, you spray the fragrance on yourself and you will test it throughout the day. I feel like it, it like I've mentioned you guys, you know, it's a true experience. Instead of just like taking a sample or a decant and just like applying it and that's that. You know, I feel like if you are one who's passionate about fragrances, you could truly make like a beautiful ritual when you're testing these fragrances, you know. Now for today's video, I want to share my thoughts on five fragrances from Unui Nomad. I want to talk about Ambre Hanjar about a fragrance called Jardin de Mistva, and I think this one is one of their most popular fragrances, about another fragrance that I saw, I saw it being mentioned a lot on YouTube, Sugar Leather, uh, and about two other fragrances, Suma Oriental and Click Song. So yes, uh, I have tried all these fragrances on my skin at least once. Honestly, when it comes to these fragrances, not yesterday, but like two days ago, I knew I wanted to film this video and my partner was home and I asked him if I could spray some of the fragrances on him. Look, you guys, in all honesty, I feel like if you are one who reviews fragrances, it's good to have a feel of how the fragrance evolves on a man's skin, you know? So if he was open to it, I was like, why not? And can I just say, you guys, that on me, the performance for these fragrances is great, but none lasts more than seven hours on my skin. But you guys, on him, let me look for the fragrance. So Ambre Hanjar, this one lasted for more than 22 hours on his arm. I spread it here after 22 hours. Basically, it was during... It was like around 8 p.m. I sprayed it next day, like he woke up, he went to work, he came back home and that night he was sniffing his arm and he was like, oh my God, I cannot believe the scent is still there. And this was still going on strong, but this is a very heavy fragrance on its own. The other one, Click Song. Click Song also lasted amazing on his skin. It was going strong there with Ambre Hanjar. I also could smell Jardin de Misfa, but that one was more muted, mellow. You know, it wasn't as uh, strong as the other two ones that I have mentioned, but you guys, it was still there. I was like, oh my God, these fragrances do last. Uh, like I said, on my skin, now keep in mind, he's a man, lots of hair on his arms, you know, so the fragrance stuck to his hair, hairs. But if you're a woman, if you epilate or if you just naturally don't have a lot of hair on you, the fragrance doesn't stick to any hairs on your arm, you know. Let's start with sugar leather because I know this one is quite popular on YouTube at the moment and it's a sand DNA that I have to say, I feel like if you love these apple pie kind of fragrances even though this doesn't have listed any apple you will enjoy this fragrance so like always i will insert the notes for this fragrance but i also want to insert for all the fragrances a picture with a beautiful card that they all come with so you can get like a feel let's just say you can get like an idea and a feel behind the concept of the fragrance you know so like i said let's start with sugar leather oh my god you guys i cannot <laughs> oh, okay i will spray it with the other one oh, i didn't really think this through you know okay This, like when I first tried this fragrance for the first time, it reminded me of Health at Night by Avatar Collection. I don't know why, even though when I got to test it more, they definitely don't have, let's just say, the same notes and of course that shine, but this has something that ties it to that fragrance. Now, I want to say that among amongst all these five fragrances, this one is the most breeziest of them all, even though it's not the lightest one because it has quite dense full notes you know but in terms of like the texture of the fragrance it's quite airy in a sense and it also has something molecular about it you know yeah this one opens up with a leather not even leather to me it's more like suede i don't get it doesn't smell like new leather bag new leather shoes that type of like strong leather you know it's more like a suede accord slightly fuzzy but the feel i feel like the way they did this suede accord here it smells First of all, it's very easy to enjoy. There's nothing challenging about it. It smells like suede, first of all, with something slightly, slightly airy, slightly woodsy about it in a sense, but quite, quite bright in a way, you know, it's not very deep, dark, mysterious. It's definitely more full and dense, but bright at the same time. 
So you have this with something that to my nose again translates as apple. The smell of apple, like I said, it doesn't have listed any apple, but I get something that ties this fragrance to Halt at Night, Hamra by Latafa, Angel Share by Killian, you know, that whole scent family, even though I feel like this one differentiates to those in a sense that it's more sugary and it's more molecular in a way, especially on the skin. I have noticed this aspect as it starts to develop, it gets even breezier, even lighter, even brighter. I feel like, I don't know again if it has listed, but as it develops, I get something cashmere run like, you know, that overall adds a lot of brightness, of airiness throughout the whole scent composition. But yeah, this is definitely sweet. The sweet feel here, it's not suffocating. In, it's a sweet it's an apple-like sweetness in a sense with sugar. I don't know why the sugary feel. Again, only first time I tried it because as I got to test it more, of course, uh, I started to notice more the differences than the similarities with the other fragrances. But the sugary feel, first time I tried it, it reminded me of the sugariness from Arabian Stonka. Even though Arabian Stonka is much heavier, it's much deeper, it's much more robust of a scent, I feel like. But And the sugary accord there, it's much stronger as well. Here you get, you get just a pinch of it, but you still get it, you know? So it's this very interesting, dry, sugary, sweet, spicy, suede fragrance with a very bright, woody accord, you know? This is how it smells like to me. It has the sweet part, it has the dry part, it has the airy part, it has the, the part that gives, let's just say, a slight depth to the fragrance, but I feel like the overall fragrance is quite dry, like I've said, soft, woody, bright, you know, cashmere mixed with a beautifully done suede accord, nothing challenging about it. You also have the sweetness, so if you have to appreciate sweet fragrances to enjoy this fragrance, you get the cinnamon, but you also get this very interesting you guys apple-like smell i don't know where it's coming from but i get it and i have to say i'm not mad about it because i really like how it smells this one to me i feel like it's one of the fragrances that um when you smell it again in its sillage that's when you get what's best of it when you smell it very close to the skin it still smells very beautiful don't get me wrong but i feel like this fragrance was made to be smelled in a sense by people around you, you know it was made to be smelled in its trail in its ears you know that's when you get the most beautiful delicious notes about it so as you guys this definitely has some gourmand leaning facets about it even though i wouldn't say this is like a true gourmand kind of fragrance you know now look when i smell it like this on its own i can definitely tell you that it doesn't follow the same scent dna as Halt at Night by Atar Collection or Hamra or Killian Angel Share. But it still has something that ties this fragrance to all the other fragrances. And again, maybe to me to my nose, like I've said, it's something apple-like, you know, not not your apple pie kind of apple. But it's very interesting because sometimes I smell it and I get legit suede mixed with sugar. It smells beautiful. And with that like cashmere and like feel in the background. Other times I smell it and I get the apple-like feel. So I don't know, I feel like this is the kind of fragrance that everyone will get something different out of it. Honestly, to say that this is just a sugar and suede or leather fragrance would be an, an understatement, would be, uh, basically it wouldn't cover the whole complexity of this fragrance, you know, even though it seems like something very simplistic, you know, but once you get to actually test it, this has lots of hidden facets about it. So yeah, so those are my thoughts about sugar leather. Let's move on to the next one. Let me see uh, in which order should I go because I want to leave the really heavy ones for last. So let's go with, uh, you know what, let's actually go with Jardin de Misfa. Now uh, for this one, because I have the presentation, I will insert here a clip with the presentation. It comes packaged very beautiful, you guys. And the bottle itself, it feels very classy and minimalistic and luxurious you know and i love the sticker here and the writing the gold writing on a green font not font like background it looks very beautiful with the palm tree and everything now this is from the Unui a oman collection this one i will actually spray it on my skin now you guys this one when i looked the notes up i was in love basically it has rose it has nutmeg cardamom uh, saffron and it has dates now when I saw rose and dates I was sold I was like oh my god what a combo what a combo I love how dates smell but I also love the taste of dates you know so I was like if they if they really manage to replicate how dates feel and if they really manage to 
transfer that texture into the fragrance, this would be something else. This fragrance, when I first smelled it, it definitely took me by complete surprise. It didn't smell, especially in the opening. It smelled nothing like how, how I was expecting it to be. I was honestly expecting to get a very sweet rose. Yes, of course, I was expecting... I cannot speak. I was expecting the rose to be rich, perhaps a red rose or like this really rich, decadent pink rose type of feel, you know, like... Um, Turkish rose or something like this uh, with lots of sweetness. So I was expecting this fragrance to lean more gourmand. But when I tell you that this fragrance actually goes through such a development and it has such a turn at some point, you need, like, if you actually are curious about this fragrance, you need to properly test it. Not just spray it once on a piece of car, smell it two times and be like, oh, okay, it's not that. This fragrance keeps changing and it keeps changing and changing and changing. And how to say? The changes themselves are not like crazy changes from a minute to another, but they are, they are subtle changes that add up and it smells completely different than to how it smelled in the opening. So this is why I say, if you want to test this fragrance, give it time, test it on your skin. This one, I will actually apply it on my skin. Like I said, I was very surprised to see how beautiful this fragrance develops. So you guys, it starts off. Also, by the way, the sprayer, no, you know what? I'm not gonna spray it in the air because then I will not be able to smell the other fragrances that well. You guys, this starts quite a bitter in a way, not bitter like herbal bitter, not that type, or like grapefruit kind of bitter, not that type. Bitter smells like a bitter rose, like, mm, how to explain? Imagine like lots of roses, like lots of like freshly picked red roses, but the rose itself, it doesn't feel very light and breezy. It feels quite rich and heavy, but you have more of the petals of the, of the fragrance, of the flower, not the greenness part. But also imagine like, by mistake, a little bit of uh, rose stem got in there and it started to go, it started to like basically like, this sounds very bad when I say it, but it's actually, it has a really interesting touch to the fragrance. It started to like turn bad in a sense, you know, so you get the rose, but you also get this like soft green bitterness, like, I don't know where is it coming from. I don't know if I'm the only one that gets it, but I feel like this aspect adds such a unique and interesting twist to the fragrance. It's beautiful. So it doesn't open up as sweet as I was expecting it to be. I feel like you will get to the sweet part in the dry down. Let's just say, maybe 30 minutes in the fragrance goes very sweet and you will get the dates the and but i will tell you how it smells then but in the opening it smells imagine this like rich red rose accord with a tad of something slightly green and sharp with a tad of something slightly bitter as well the, you have also the sweetness but the sweetness it's almost like it's such it's so deep in the background at this point that it's one of the last things that I get it. And I also get lots of spices. Now the spices that I get, imagine like you already have this dense, full, rich, robust scent with rose, lots of roses, with a little bit of, like I said, something bitter. And it's almost like you sprinkle on top a little bit of nutmeg powder. You know, you don't have the essential oil-esque quality of the nutmeg, but you have more like a soft powder nutmeg but you still get that nutmeg-like tinge, you know? Nutmeg as a spice is not the sweetest one, you know? And also something slightly fresh, slightly green. Yeah, and I think that comes from the cardamom. I feel like the main accord that this is made around, it's a rose accord for sure. The rose accord with a very pronounced ambery nuance in the background, but again, this doesn't go ambery, ambery. It just feels I feel like the amber accord here just adds lots of richness, lots of warmth and lots of fullness to the fragrance, you know, so the overall stand composition is very full and dense, but it still smells like red roses, you know, with that like soft bitter feel with something spicy from the cardamom. So it's slightly fresh, slightly green, but that's like a slight tinge with something, with something from the nutmeg, but again, just a tinge, nothing too much. But it's such a beautiful fragrance, you guys. To me, the more I tested this fragrance, the more I started to notice that it has this... It has this sophisticated aura about it. It smells very bold and statement with some sweetness, but with a sophisticated edge at the same time, you know? And I think, I truly think it takes a developed nose to appreciate this fragrance because again, you don't just have sweetness and rose, you know? 
it's definitely not your like your roses vanilla intense cafe that type of scent you also have the bitterness you also have the spices basically as this fragrance starts to develop i feel like the bitterness slowly starts to fade away and when i say bitterness don't think something like crazy bitter you know no but again it's just a tinge there but it's a tinge enough to give something edgy to the fragrance you know but not to overpower it overpower it in a negative way you know as this fragrance starts to develop on your skin the nutmeg fades away the cardamom fades away you don't get that soft fresh green feel you don't get the spicy tinge from the nutmeg the bitterness again tones down lots and lots and i feel like the rose starts to get even warmer even denser even more like the star of the show you know with less nuances that make it go in all these different directions and this is the moment when i start to detect spices but in the sense so imagine something that smells very warm, like an ultra warm rose accord that sits on a base of amber that adds lots of warmth, lots of richness, lots of fullness to the fragrance. But imagine you add to this scent the feeling when you just open your spice cabinet, you lean in to get something and then you get all the whips from all these kind of different spices. I get something similar here. So you have this spicy tinge now in the heart but the rose itself gets more and more sweet, uh, but not sweet in like a sickly sweet way, sweet in like an upscale gourmand type of sweetness, you know? This is a complex fragrance, you guys. I feel like it does, it can seem like a simplistic fragrance in a sense that if you test it and you don't give it enough time, or maybe you, yeah, let's just say if you test it and you don't give it enough time, you won't get all these nuances, you know? So for some, it might just be like a sweet rose, but believe me, it's so much more than just a sweet rose. And I know I, uh, I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about rose fragrances because rose is my favorite note, rose with spices. I love sweet fragrances as well. So I've tested like 100, at least 100 rose-based fragrances, you know, from various brands, from various prices. So I am very familiar with different types of roses in fragrances. Oh my God, it smells so beautiful. I have to say the dry down of this fragrance is my favorite part. In the dry down, it's when you start to really get the date smell and how the dry the date the date translates here to my nose basically you start to get this very warm dense sticky sweetness <laughs> sticky sweetness this really warm and dense but slightly sticky sweetness you know uh, and i feel like slowly but surely the rose moves, moves behind the sweetness in a way so you get a little bit less of the rose even though the rose is still present but i feel like at this point you get more like the red rose you know without any greenness that you had in the opening let's just say so you get this aspect but with lots of date um it smells it smells like a dessert in a sense it smells very flavored it smells it legit smells like a middle eastern dessert honestly with like rose water on top you know those like uh, how do you call them in english like dumplings with like rose water you know but imagine like you would pour like uh, dump, like you would pour rose water on like something made with dates and some nuts, you know there, because it does have this like slightly almondy nutty aspect about it as well. But very sweet, and also I get more of the vanilla as it starts to shine. I don't know, maybe it's the date accord. Let's continue with Suma Oriental. Now I feel like if you uh, Ambre Hanjar and Suma Oriental do have some similarities in the sense that both of them have uh, resinous balsamic facets, but I feel like Suma Oriental, let's just continue with this one. Okay, so the notes for Suma Oriental, I will insert them here on the screen, as well as the story behind the fragrance, but what I can tell you about it from testing it. This, you guys, somewhere, somewhere among the lineage of this fragrance, <laughs> It meets with something from Keali's Vanilla Royal Sugared Patchouli. Both of them are made around a beautiful, deep, decadent patchouli smell with sweetness, but then they go in their different directions. The one from Keali has that like burnt sugar, caramel, creme brulee type of sweetness. Whereas this one to me smells like patchouli. The patchouli here is it's not damp wet basement like you know it smells earthy it smells a little bit soil like but also a little bit like a grounding and green you know but again like a deep mysterious green type of patchouli not the overly herbal aromatic type of patchouli you know so you have this feel with something boozy to my nose it smells it smells like rum i don't know you guys it smells like a little bit of alcohol like a little bit of booze was put in the fragrance you know with this deep i don't want to say gourmand leaning 
even though they could be considered gourmand facets, something like deep, powdery, chocolatey, cocoa powder, that type of feel, you know? But again, with lots of patchouli, and I feel like the patchouli is the star of the show, and all the other notes are almost like beautifying notes to the way they play the patchouli here, you know? So you don't have the patchouli, let's just say, as like a supporting note. No, it's the star of the show, so you have to really enjoy the smell of patchouli to appreciate this fragrance. But the patchouli here doesn't lean like essential oil-esque, you know? Neither does it lean like a damp soil type of patchouli. It feels to my nose dry, dry, earthy, deep green and mysterious. You know, this is how I could describe it. With something like dark cocoa powder, like like dark, dark chocolate, but like a powdery dark chocolate in a sense. Again, I feel like the overall feel of the fragrance is quite mysterious, it's quite deep, it's quite grounding with some gourmand leaning facets without being a gourmand fragrance. Uh, as a reference, it's less sweet than uh, vanilla royal sugared patchouli from Keali. But I'm telling you, somewhere along the among, along, along, among, along the lineage, <laughs> these two fragrances met somewhere, you know. And I feel like the word image is the patchouli, basically. Both of them are made around patchouli. But this one, again, to me, this is not an overly sweet take on patchouli in a sense. This to me, you need the taste for patchouli to appreciate this fragrance. And you need a taste for this kind of fragrances in general. It also has something slightly resinous, slightly balsamic, but I feel like here on paper, that aspect doesn't shine that much. But on my skin, especially in the opening up to the heart, that's when I really get lots of that one as well. And I feel like how that aspect plays here in the fragrance on my skin in the opening till the heart is in the fact that it adds a slight richness and a slight warm feel to the fragrance. But that one, as it starts to develop, fully goes away. So the fragrance goes even more cold, even more chilly, even more deep, even more mysterious, you know. And I feel like the beautifying notes for the patchouli they start to get softer and softer, more and more muted, you know, so the patchouli is what, again, shines the most to me. But it's a beautiful take on patchouli. It's different to Black Orchid as a reference. It's more, it's complex, mm, how to explain? Like, it's complex in the sense that you get the patchouli with a slight boozy edge, something rum-like, you know, like a whiff of rum with the patchouli, with something cocoa powder dark chocolatey like with something very deep and green and mysterious not very herbal leaning you know and not very aromatic as well but yeah deep green and mysterious with something slightly powdery with something slightly balsamic but i feel like the scent itself doesn't really change that much for instance as uh, jardin de misfa you know like when you spray that fragrance and you smelled it for the first time how it smells versus how it smells in the dry down two different fragrances, of course, in the same scent family, whatever, whatever, but they are like two different fragrances. This one, this one just goes colder and colder and colder to a point, or like it reaches a point where it legit feels like it exudes this like chilly feel about it, you know? Yeah, beautiful fragrance, definitely a unisex fragrance. I could definitely wear this one, but I feel like this feels Again, it feels elegant, elevated, a little bit sophisticated, but this one feels mysterious, you know, when you want to feel like all like mysterious, you know, and things. Yeah, this is something that I would reach for in those occasions. Not when you want something sweet with patchouli. No, definitely keep in mind this is less sweet than um, the one from Kelly that I have mentioned. And let me think what other fragrances I know in this scent family. I don't think I know a lot of fragrances in this scent family, honestly. I mean, I know a lot of patchouli forward fragrances, but I don't know like patchouli in these kind of mixes. At least none come to my mind at the moment. So let's move on to the next fragrance and let's move on. Okay, let's move on to Amre Hanjar. And I will leave the other one, Click Song, uh, as the last one. <sighs> okay, this fragrance, I think I want to apply it on my skin, honestly. Yeah, but then I also want to apply Click Song on my skin. So what should I do? Hmm. Let me think. The thing is, I feel like, first of all, this is such a complex fragrance that unless you test it on your skin, there's no point in testing it, honestly, because uh, you will not understand it. Uh, whereas this one, I could test it on paper, but I also kind of want to test it on my skin. This fragrance, again, I will insert the notes here. This is a very bold and daring fragrance. I remember the first time I tried this fragrance, it reminded me of like more more wearable and approachable version of Imperial Oud from Al Haramein. That one, 
I think I have an older video where I talk about it. That one is a very raw, balsamic, woody fragrance, but smells like the first word that comes to my mind when I think of this fragrance or like that fragrance is raw. It's balsamic, but such a realistic balsamic that it almost feels a little bit too realistic. You know, if you ask me, that fragrance is definitely not first time for everyone in a sense is for someone who has a taste for those kind of fragrances that one definitely leans very masculine to my nose personally i wouldn't wear it but i can appreciate like the artistic aspect behind it you know whereas this one to me in the opening it feels like a more approachable wearable version of that one so this again definitely does have a middle eastern feel to it but not with rose and wood but with spice you guys this one in the opening i don't know why it gives me the feel that i'm smelling a very it's an amber cord, first of all, but like a very, not very, a slightly skank amber cord, you know, and the skank, I feel like it comes from a leather cord as well here. Smells very leathery. I know, I mean, I know. I think this has listed, it must have listed labdanum because you get lots of this like raw, true balsamic quality of the labdanum with something slightly propolic, something slightly leathery but funky this fragrance definitely has a funk to it it's not one of those soft amber accords you know they just add a little bit of sweetness a little bit of warmth a little bit of roundness no this is like in your face type of amber accord this is strong this is what i would call an opulent fragrance this one is this is the kind of fragrance you know what uh, how i was saying that uh, the person who Whereas I think I was talking about Jardin de Misfa is not the kind of person or like sugar leather, I don't remember exactly. But basically the person who would choose to wear that fragrance is not the person who wants to have the strongest fragrance in the room. Yeah, the person who would reach for this fragrance for an event is the kind of person who definitely wants their fragrances to be first thing uh, people notice about them you know they are like present they are like strong they are there to stay to project to last to leave a siage to uh, um, you know like fill up rooms you know this is the kind of fragrance so i feel like this one this one as well as well as click song these two are the heaviest ones from what i have tried so far from them but also they are the least safe ones to blind but if you were to ask me for instance if with um sugar leather honestly there's not really a reason to not enjoy it to me it smells very easy to enjoy yes you have the suede yes you should enjoy suede but it's not it's not like a deal breaker if you don't enjoy suede because you have all the sweet facets of the fragrance you know jardin de misfa as well if you are familiar with fragrances that lean middle eastern i don't think it's really challenging of course it's a very complex fragrance of course as always you should test the fragrances for yourself but i feel like the fragrance itself is not very challenging suma oriental which one is it yeah suma oriental as well slightly a bit more challenging but if you're a fan of patchouli or if you tolerate patchouli you will enjoy this one as well whereas this one this one you need to have the taste i mean of course you guys for all you need to have the taste you know i will never recommend you just to blind by something never do this um but i feel like for this one for for ambre hanjar yeah you need to have the taste you need to have the taste for fragrances with a funky leather accord the leather here definitely smells funky it reminds me a little bit of um imperial wood from al Haramein of this fragrance it has but i feel like that fragrance goes even more challenging in a sense goes the wood the way they did the wood there it's even more unapologetic you know less less approachable this one i feel like it's a little bit more approachable but still challenging and it also reminds me of um khulasat al oud from al Haramein. yeah but that one it's the leather, the leather, the leather cord from that fragrance reminds me of the leather cord from this fragrance. But the leather cord in that fragrance, you guys, smells smells very funky, but you also have there the smell of like an ash tree, you know, with like lots of ashy smoke from cigars, with something that smells like a man's deodorant, you know. That one is a whole different mood. So I feel like, again, if you have tried that fragrance, it's just the leather cord that's similar to me, because it has a funk as well, and not like an wood like funk, like a leathery balsamic type of funk, you know. Yeah, this is a true balsamic fragrance. It feels, again, I want to feel, I want to say that it feels very raw, but I don't know if you, I managed to explain what this means to me or like how this translates to my nose. Basically, it feels very balsamic, you know, like very balsamic, sli slightly funky, slightly, not slightly, kind of funky, especially in the opening, kind of leathery, but the leather, again, it doesn't smell like, um, like a new leather bag, for instance. It doesn't have that type of leather, you know it smells like a leather like imagine like a leather like a dusty 
skanky old leather you know it's that type of leather cord of course with a little bit of an ambery base in the background you know because again this feels very heavy this feels very rich very deep somehow somehow it also feels slightly dry at the same time i feel like it's because the way they did the leather here from time to time this almost feels like tobacco -y in a sense i don't know how to describe it like leathery tobacco -y, like a little bit plummy in a sense but again so deep in the background that you barely get it and especially in the open Opening, at least to my nose I don't get those notes because um, I, I'm telling you the funk of the leather is there you know you get labdanum if you have ever smelled absolute of labdanum it's that exact same feel but imagine you add a very funky leather to that smell so it's that exact same feel very deep like it smells it smells brown you know it smells like an uh, like like I told you like an old dusty funky skanky leather but as this one starts to develop I feel like it's starts to open up in a sense like the notes that were very challenging in the opening they let's just say they become a bit more approachable now you know you start to get a little bit like it's almost like the light at the end of the tunnel you know when you thought that this fragrance is impossible to pull off for a woman at least you know you start to get a little bit of the sweetness of the vanilla but again a very shy sweetness in the opening i feel like yes this one has somewhat of a sweetness to it but it's a balsamic kind of sweetness the sweetness i feel like comes from labdanum it's a labdanum like sweetness in the opening you know so it's more like propolic more, more balsamic more like not balmy but like yeah like propolic in a sense you know uh, whereas uh, as it starts to develop you get a little bit of the vanilla you get a little bit of something plum like you know and it goes i feel like the funk of the leather it almost goes a little bit like tobacco now you know something tobacco like uh, i feel like this part i could definitely pull it off you know you get the vanilla you still get the balsamic feel a little bit of the leather but you get tobacco something plummy you know still something very dry something slightly funky in the background but now it's almost like you know like i've mentioned you start to have all these like beautifying notes still would i wear this one myself i don't know honestly you guys i don't think i would because the kind of uh the way they did the fragrance to me to me this one would truly shine on a gentleman honestly even though let's just say maybe one day i'm feeling very assertive very strong very powerful you know like very dominant and i want something to like suit that energy yeah, I think I have other fragrances that I would wish for. As a reference, this one to me, I know a lot of you watching my videos have that fragrance or at least have tried it. To me, this definitely leans more masculine than uh, Marshall Sultan by Azdaf, you know? And not because it has like a deep freshness, you know, or that like deodorant type of masculine edge, no. It's because of the way they played here with the funk, with the leather, with the balsamic aspect of the fragrance. Like I said, let's move on to Click Song. Now, where should I apply this fragrance? that's the question because like i've mentioned this is such a complex fragrance that unless you apply it on your skin there's no point in applying it on paper because on paper i'm not the biggest fan you guys and it's also it's a fragrance that it leans very creative to me and also by the way you guys i read the the card for this one and this was inspired by um miriam makeba a singer from south africa i will insert of course the card if you want to hear the story behind and then i looked uh, her music up and she actually has a song that's called click song you know so yeah something interesting to touch okay so here i have jardin de misma no i will apply it here i will apply it here because it's very strong so i'm sure it will overpower i still can't apply with this finger okay so let's see No, this fragrance, I feel like it's one of the most complex fragrances that I have personally tried myself. And I feel like it's so easy to misjudge it, you know. Hold on, because my hair. It's so easy to misjudge it, you guys. It smells... Hmm. It's very hard to describe the smell of this fragrance, but I am so intrigued by this fragrance. Um, so, you definitely get lots of rose. The rose here, it feels like an absolute of rose. So it feels very, very vibrant and very passionate in a sense. And it feels like an absolute of pink roses something like this to my nose but in the opening it's it's hidden in a sense behind all the other notes so you only get you only get it like when i'm smelling this fragrance i get it only when i i stop smelling this fragrance i don't know if it uh it's not you know how like after you eat something it's like the aftertaste now when you smell something it's like the after smell you know like that lo that like last second of scent you know that you have in your nose for the fragrance from the fragrance yes that's when i smell the rose here 
it smells it smells red it smells passionate it smells complex it smells not inky but where's the word in english it smells warm and round and enveloping but it's almost like it has so many different facets it has something you definitely have saffron here the saffron again is the same kind of saffron that to me gives me this like um like passionate red spicy tinge i don't know why with the rose with something resinous balsamic but the way that the balsamic resinous feel smells here it's it's a bit what's the word in english oh my god not not glue like because that doesn't smell like glue but somehow a little bit rubbery in a sense with a very pronounced cedar wood feel in the background so you get the woody part but you also get the like foresty green edge you know from the cedar wood but it's such deep in the background it's behind the resinous parts you get so i feel like you will start to get it more as it starts to develop but in the opening you guys it smells so it smells so interesting it smells so unique it smells so creative i don't feel like i can properly describe how it smells in the opening I mean, of course, I could tell the notes that it has in the opening, but the notes play in such a way that, like, you look at the notes and it's not really how you would imagine the fragrance smelling like, you know? So I had to let it sit for a few minutes so it gets a chance to open up and I can actually describe it in a sense. So as it started to sit a little bit, you get the rose, clearly. But the rose, again, it feels like a rose absolute. Uh, not rose with greenness like a dewy fleshy stemmy rosy type of smell definitely not that like a like an absolute of rose you know so it feels very rich and thick and concentrated you know like an absolute of rose uh, but like an absolute of pink rose to my nose so you get that then you get something saffrony passionate about it then i start to get something slightly rubbery but then deep in the background behind all these nuances that i've told you about i start to get the smell of benzoin and it smells so beautiful i love the smell of benzoin in fragrances you guys and the way they did here the benzoin to me smells legit almost like if i smell it now and if i smell just like the last bits of it it reminds me of like stas rose absolute by nina ricci but imagine a very like make it creative and very artistic and borderline very hard to understand you know like if you were to take the dna from like stas rose absolute from nina ricci you would add all these different facets to the fragrance so it still has the rose and the way they did the rose and the way they did the benzoin here it's similar to that one even though here the rose is a bit different but but the benzoin here basically smells if you have ever smelled the benzoin resin in your life you know it smells somehow slightly rich warm caramel vanillic like you know this is legit how it smells like it has the and like in fragrances it has the texture of the resin like it has a texture of any resinous balsamic nuances you know but it feels very approachable it feels sweet slightly caramelly slightly vanillic you know doesn't have anything challenging about it that's what i get but you also have the cedar wood heel that adds a slight uh, woody foresty feel with lots of warmth from the rose absolute to me it smells almost like a little bit jammy like the rose absolute rose jam that type of rose feel but it's very it's very concentrated very strong borderline a little bit too strong especially if you're not who appreciates roses in fragrances but it comes across as something so unique the fragrance itself feels so vivid so multifaceted it's so vibrant you guys that it's almost like it's hard to put into words and to describe it in such a way you know because it's not just like rose and benzoin and saffron or something like this is so much more than that you also get a slight balsamic tinge to the fragrance again in the background something slightly green about it but again in the background and not green coming from the rose you know because i told you the rose here feels quite quite rich on its own you know but again it has this like heat warming up like heating not heat like this warming up sensation to it with something slightly green with something slightly spicy with lots of warm rose absolute with benzoin with a touch of something balsamic it's the closest one that i could put it into a scent family with is rose calligraphy from aramis but again even compared to that fragrance they are different there you have rose with more this smells amazing oh my god i love that fragrance here you have rose 
with lots of different facets, you know, but I feel like if you enjoy that one from Aramis, if you enjoy the level of complexity, the level of creativity behind it, this click song is something that you might appreciate as well. So if you wanted to test this fragrance or if it sounds like something you'd enjoy, get a sample, get a discovery kit, test it for yourself. But my piece of advice would be give it time. Give it time and give your nose time because I'm telling you, you guys, besides, let's just say sugar leather, that's the most easy to enjoy of all these ones. And it smells amazing, don't get me wrong. Um, the other ones are a bit more creative, are a bit more unique, are a bit more abstract. Some of them, you know, they're not the kind of fragrances that you meet everywhere. And I can really see this fragrance as being way too much for some people, like way too much for some people. Such a beautiful fragrance, but so, 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 so complex, you guys, so complex. But I'm telling you, it's it's fun testing this kind of fragrances, you know, especially if you were bored with like the regular vanillas. Don't get me wrong, I love those as well. You know, I love my vanillas. But if you wanted to try something, something different, maybe you want to expand your scent knowledge. Maybe you want to explore new scent families. Maybe you just want to try out something something that's not the kind of fragrance that you smell everywhere, that you see everywhere, in every department store, in every designer store. It's not the kind of fragrance that's overly and overly duped, you know, it's not the kind of fragrance that you smell on anyone, or like on everyone, not anyone. Um, it's worth testing it, it's worth testing it, but keep in mind it's not something that's for everyone. So yes, basically you guys, this is everything I wanted to say about these fragrances. I am so surprised, but in such a positive way uh, with this brand especially with these fragrances that are they really thought through the collections they really offer something for every taste and not in the sense that oh you like fruity you have fruity you like uh, vanilla you have vanilla you like musky clean you have musky clean uh, you like a little bit of amber there you like a little bit of rose there no in a sense that you have lots of options for very for very very various, no, for very diverse tasting fragrances. And especially, I don't know if you, if you have watched some of my videos where I talk about the kind of fragrances that I love, but I love rose in fragrances, I love resins in fragrances, I love balsamic accord in fragrances, I love leather and suede in some fragrances, not in all. And I feel like you have a wide range of fragrances that you could test from this brand. I'm telling you, all surprised me, all from this collection surprised me. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. If you have tried any fragrances from Une Nomad, let me know what you think about them. Also, uh, yeah, I almost forgot to mention, the brand offered my viewers a discount code. I think there are two discount codes. One, you know what, I will insert them here on the screen because I haven't read this, the discount codes uh, before I filmed the video, so I don't know. I think it's my name, like Loredana10 and Loredana 20, something like this, but I will insert them here on screen. Uh, so feel free to use them if you want to shop any fragrances from Uni Nomad. Feel free to not use them, it's always up to you. But please let me know what you think about the brand. If you have tried some of their fragrances, I would love to hear your feedback on them, especially these fragrances that I have talked about. Let me know what you think about them. I would be very curious to know because these are some heavier fragrances, these are some creative fragrances. I can say that I was honestly so surprised about these fragrances and I love when I come across brands with such a beautiful concept behind you guys. I'm telling you like between us, you know, like I really took my time with the brand because uh, I got these fragrances. Oh my God, I think it was summer, like July or August. Now I'm, it's like the end of October when I'm filming the video. So yeah. But I really wanted to test them, you know, during different times, let's just say, especially these heavier ones, because I knew I wanted to start with the heavier ones, because uh, these are my kind of fragrances, you know, and I think they're also your kind of fragrances if you resonate with my taste, you know. So yeah, uh, but don't worry, I will talk about the other ones as well. But without making this video any longer, thank you so much for watching, you guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Here is my handle. I will see you in my next video, but until then, Thank you so much for watching and I want to wish you an amazing day wherever you are. Bye.